Welcome to Penn State's High Tunnel Research Facility. Today, we are going to look at considerations for choosing a site for your high tunnel, and how to deal with situations where a perfect location may not be available. The area should be reasonably level. Tunnels with very basic structures may be more accommodating to varying degrees of slope, while tunnels with more complex structures will be less adaptable. It is suggested that you check with your high tunnel provider for their recommendations regarding acceptable slope. The location should ideally have a slope of less than 3%. If desired, the ground can be leveled, however this is not required. If the slope is not consistent, you should level the site. The site should ideally be well drained. Areas with poor drainage should either be avoided or have drainage systems installed. Sites with adequate but marginal drainage for field production may accumulate standing water once tunnels are present, as roof runoff will become concentrated around the tunnels during heavy rains. If tunnel runoff and soil erosion may be a problem, make plans to control them with drainage pipes or other dispersal systems. Soil quality considerations are similar to those for open field production. Heavier soils are more prone to root rot development, and there have been instances of water seeping under the tunnel edges from runoff, resulting in plant loss. What is below the soil surface is also important. Rocks can impede or prevent the metal collars from being hammered into the ground. It can also cause the pipes to bend, making them unusable. Growers in areas with shallow soil may wish to consult soil surveys if uncertain about subsurface components. Other ways to check for obstructions are to hammer in some rebar, leaving sufficient length exposed to extract it, or dig small holes in the area. Either option would require checking to a depth of about 2 feet. In the event that rocks are abundant, growers may wish to reconsider using the site or use specialized tools for breaking rocks. In some instances, collars have been shortened, but this can result in less stability with high winds and generally is not recommended by the tunnel provider or the NRCS High Tunnel Initiative. Consider what utilities are desired at the high tunnel location. If lines such as water and electricity are already present at the location, they will need to be properly identified and flagged so potential damage can be avoided during tunnel construction. If utility lines do not exist at the current site, plans will need to be made to install them. The tunnel will need to be optimally oriented within the space that you have available. Two factors to consider are wind direction and sunlight angle. Generally, it is recommended that the tunnel be placed perpendicularly to the prevailing wind so it can travel through the tunnel, providing sufficient ventilation. It is generally recommended that growers who live above the 40-degree latitude orient their tunnels east to west, while those below the 40-degree latitude orient north to south. This image shows the solar elevation angles in central Pennsylvania in June and December. When the tunnel is oriented east to west in northern regions, the lower sun angle in winter causes more light wavelengths to enter through the sides, which is beneficial when fall or winter crop production is desired. Your crop choice may also impact tunnel orientation. If tall or trellised crops will be grown, then the tunnels should be oriented north to south so each row of the crop can receive maximum sunlight. However, wind direction and ventilation are generally considered to be the overriding factors. Another final factor of site selection is to consider the convenience of equipment access to the tunnel site. Easy transport to produce washing or storage facilities should also be considered, as well as future expansion should additional tunnels be desired.